Hello, I'm David Kelly. I'm a senior fellow at the Atlas Society and a consultant to the Atlas Shrugged movies. Atlas Shrugged is a story about the decline of an entire society. The decline is rooted in the conflict between producers and the people in government and their hangers-on who are trying to control and exploit the producers. So much of the story is set in the world of work, in offices and factories and railroad lines. But Atlas is also a story about individual people and their lives. And there's more to life than work. In this vein, it's a love story centered on the protagonist, Dagny Taggart, who runs a railroad that spans a continent. Dagny has been in love before, but she has always longed for a greater love, a longing that she experiences as the image of a man at the end of the rails. In the novel, on a lonely night toward the end of part two, she puts the desire into silent words. You, whoever you are, whom I have always loved and never found. You, whom I expected to see at the end of the rails. At the beginning of part three in the film trilogy, she finds him. She meets John Galt when her plane crashes in the Secret Valley, where he is leading a strike of the best producers. Galt and the others want her to join the strike, but she's not ready to make that choice, despite what she feels for Galt. Here is a scene from the night before she leaves. Have you decided? Are you going back? Yes. But Frisco said it's too dangerous for you. I don't want you to go. It's not up to you. You're going for my sake. No, for mine. Will we see each other? No. Will you be watching me? More so. Why? To be there the day you decide to join us. What if I told you I will never join you? That would be a lie. But John, the risk. I wouldn't do it if I had no selfish end to gain. What selfish end? I want you here. Much later in the story, we see Galt and Dagny together again. Galt has revealed the strike in a public speech, putting himself at risk from the authorities he has denounced. Dagny finds out where he lives and goes to warn him. I'm so afraid. I had to warn you. You don't need to explain, but you were followed. I don't think so. I mean, sure. The only thing they're good at is snooping. They'll be here any minute. Then let's get out of here no, right now. No, From now on, you have to make them think that you are on their side, that what? I'm your enemy. What? If you do, I have a chance to survive this. They need me alive, but they wouldn't think twice about hurting you or worse. And I couldn't stand that. If I hear of it, I will kill myself and stop them right there. Convince them that you hate me. You must. Do you understand? I do. These two scenes raise a question. Love is often regarded as selfless, as in the lines from the New Testament often recited at weddings. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not seek its own. So how does love fit in with Ayn Rand's philosophy that one should live for oneself? as reflected in the oath that every striker swears not to live for another person, nor ask anyone else to live for him. To answer that question, we have to start with the nature of love and why it is a profoundly important personal value, and thus, in the proper sense of the term, profoundly selfish. To live for yourself, you first have to be yourself, and more, you have to know yourself, know what you want in life, know what you believe, know what matters to you, each of us has a unique identity that includes character, personality, distinctive ways of thinking and acting. 
So how then do we experience self-knowledge? From the inside, by introspection and reflection. And that's hard. Most of us, for example, would be hard put to say exactly what our personality is. We're on the inside looking out and our own distinctive modes of thinking and acting just feel like standard operating procedure to us. But others can observe those modes from the outside. And when another person gets me, responding in ways that show that he or she understands and appreciates who I am, the real me, then I have a sense of my own identity in a more concrete form. I become more visible to myself. And of course, it's a two-way street. I provide that benefit when I get the other person. Now, it's not that we are thinking about all this when we're with someone we love. The conscious experience is one of interest, pleasure, attraction, love. But visibility is the best explanation psychologists can give for why those feelings are so important and can be so intense. Okay, back to John and Dagny. When he says in the first scene that he's going back for his sake, not hers, he doesn't mean he's going at her expense. He's going, as he says, to be there the day you decide to join us. In that sense, he's going for her sake too. But the point is, it's not an act of self-sacrifice. He has a selfish aim. I want you here. The second scene raises a tougher question. Galt says he will kill himself if the authorities torture Dagny to get him to comply. Wouldn't that be self-sacrifice? Well, yes, in one obvious sense, he would be giving up his life. But the life he wants is a life with her. He loves her so much that his life would lose meaning without her. It would be just another kind of death, a living death. As he says in the novel, I do not care to see you enduring a drawn out murder. There will be no values for me to seek after that, and I do not care to exist without values. So is love selfish? Not in the sense of being mean or envious or vain and puffed up. The Bible's right about that. But it is selfish in a deeper sense. To love someone or be loved, you first have to be someone and you have to value the person you are. And what lovers give each other is then the heightened experience of each other's uniqueness and value. Ask yourself, would you want the person you love to be with you from pity, as a sacrifice, with no personal selfish interest in you? Again, if the person you love were being victimized, would you have no interest in trying to save him or her? Would you be proud of yourself if you just stood by? If you found your man or woman at the end of the rails, or even just dreamed of it, you know the answers.